Welcome back to Force of Education, this is Zed. Today, we're giving another update on Vinco Ventures, going with the ticker BBIG. In this video, we're going to go towards a bit more due diligence, and then with technical analysis, we're going to wrap that video up and what I think about this one. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So BBIG, we did talk about this stock before multiple times this week, but today we're bringing a new update for this one. So if you have never heard about BBIG, basically there are a venture or a, they, well, they stand up for Vinco Ventures, but they have different companies underneath them. They basically buy companies, they grow them and innovate uh, to kind of short with the BIG strategy. And one of the companies underneath them, Immersive Entertainment, they have an NFT platform, and that's kind of what's taking all the buzz. And with this NFT platform, what they basically did was release the Lori Tane, or Tory Lane's, my bad, I said Lori Tane's, Tory Lane's uh, album, which is 1 million copies out there. It has around seven songs, and you're able to buy it uh, for around, I think, $1 per or per, so per album, so per copy itself. So that was quite interesting to see. Currently, you're able to see that the marketplace uh, has opened up. So they did also kind of create a marketplace for those uh, in general. And you're able to see some different prices. It goes really currently uh, anywhere 500 to I believe the lowest was 150 and it goes all the way to 99 million or currently the lowest is actually two dollars and then 250. It's only one copy of two dollars. Currently, it's increasing back to 250 and it kind of trades almost like a commodity at this level. People, the retail, the market itself sets the price and people buy it on that price. And the kind of speculation about it is that it could bring more people, more artists into the NFT streaming realm, and that would be massive. Aside of that is the high short interest and the short volumes. So first off, let's take a look into the short interest. Currently, this is updated an hour ago, actually updated 27 minutes ago. And you're able to see that the BBIG shorts available for share for short selling uh, is zero. So there's zero short shares availability currently, which is a little bit weird because previously in my last video, it was also zero. So speaking of which, make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and leave vacations on. If you're mobile, it should be on the bottom. Also, don't forget to drop a like to this video. You can join our Discord totally free in the description below. We're not trying to upsell you in any course or anything at all. But basically, it was zero before. And currently it's zero and it makes me question how you're still having almost 58.70% of short volume ratio yesterday and the day before almost 56% the day before 60%. So what's happening here and how are you still getting these high short volume ratios, even though the short shares availability is zero and it could be multiple things by the way. So first off, in retail, I've tried almost every broker I have access to, and I'm not able to short sell this stock at all. Now, I'm not short selling in general. I have no position either bulls or bearish onto this one. I just wanted to do it out of experimentation and see, is retail able to short sell this? And the answer I, tr I kind of got concluded to, or uh, because of all the things I've tried to do with the brokers, is that no. Um, they're not able to in general because one, first, there's no share shares available. Two, brokers have put the stock as a high risk, meaning that um, they're not comfortable giving you a margin power for this to short sell it. And what that what that means is basically when you dig margin, you're borrowing some of the money. And when you're borrowing some of the money from a broker or a bank, sometimes they're a little bit uncomfortable with your position and they say, nah, you're nuts. We're not going to let you go with this. And that's basically what's happening. So it looks like retail in general cannot short sell this one. And really it comes to the conclusion to one or two things or one of three things. First off, institutions. Are institutions the ones that are currently short selling this? The bigger names. They can short sell. They have the power to, to bypass retail brokers. Well, of course, they're not really on retail brokers. They're on a different realm. The second... It could be naked short selling, which is which has its illegalities and all that stuff. But uh, I kind of doubt. Well, actually, not don't doubt. I, I don't doubt anything from institutionals, big money. But it could be as well. Yeah, the institution money that is actually really short selling. And if institution is betting against this, it could really go on towards uh, institutions versus retail very quickly. And that would really spark some notice. Currently, the short flow is estimated to be around 51 percent. 
So I've seen some people say around 40%. The latest estimation is around 50.68% in general. And that is quite massive with a shares flow of only 23 million shares. That is massive because you're thinking about around 10 million shares being on the short selling side volumes have expanded every day really showing you massive volume strength day by day by day so it's still an ongoing battle i did think uh previously in my last video i said volumes are cooling down and usually that might be a sign that the war kind of is over but it really gave it a strong beat the ne next day and it skyrocketed uh, all the way to a new 52 week high uh, around 12 dollars but currently it's highly shorted it's still around 50.68 percent and that battle is not done again my speculations with relating to how we're still getting high short volumes even though the shares available are zero uh just keep in mind in that because i do have a hunch uh in where that money's coming from institutional buyers appear to be very quiet as well into this one and almost an earring kind of quietness so let's move on towards technical analysis now. Now we can go ahead towards technical analysis. Some of you don't really like this, but hear me out. I think with the technical analysis, the only thing we're really trying to see is momentum, momentum strength based on historical averages in the market itself. And people in the economics uh, kind of have described these uh, indicators in general. So on the moving averages, yes, it's bullish as it's kind of seeing this massive jump. 10 SMA is above 30 MA, 50 SMA is above 200 SMA. It might sound gibberish to you, but I'll break that down in a minute once we go back to it. But yeah, these are bullish things. We're going to take a look at them in a two hour perspective and I'll explain their significance on a two hour perspective. But on one day, uh, it's really far off currently. The 10 SMA is at 459 on the top. So it's half the price right now. So it's not significant to us at this current level. In terms of the 80X, it's sitting at 2618. What does that mean? So between 25 and 30, it's showing a strong trend. And it kind of moved up from the 20 to 25, which is a trend. So this means that there's a really strong trend pushing forward. Volumes and momentums are not done yet. It's kind of starting to get done around 45 to 50. That's where you start seeing the resistance and a reversal. But currently, it does show a really nice strength forward. And the million percent R, uh, which is very similar to the relative strength index, isn't even overbought. It's very close to overbought is around 20 but it's not even overbought which shows that there is still a lot of selling activities it could be either from traders people who bought from 377 people who bought from 689 or 828 or short selling from institutions or even retail somehow if they have access to that even though i tried with every broker i have access to if you by the way if you have a broker uh, or you have access to a broker which is allowing you to short sell it mention the name down below uh, let's investigate this one because i still haven't found any Again, I'm not interested in short selling. I'm just trying to see if this is actually retail or institutions. And on the other part here is the MACD. You're able to see this is a very strong bullish move. Uh, you're not seeing any kind of cooling down. The both the histograms and the lines of the single line and the MACD line are very bullish. Shows you momentum is very strong. Confirmed by momentum indicator being the strongest momentum for the stock's record at 663. Now, if we were to go ahead into a two hour perspective, what we get to see here is that it's currently in this trading action zone between 10 SMA and 30 May. Remember when I was talking about these 10 SMA is a 10 simple moving average, 50 SMA, 10 moving simple average. And basically, the consensus is that above the 50 SMA, it's bullish. Below 50 SMA is bearish. Currently, that point is at 6.1 and you get to see it moves um, as the stock moves. And the 10 SMA and the 30 MA in between, there's something called the trading action zone. That's where most positive reversals occur. That's currently between 929 and 774. So it is currently in that position where you might be able to see some bullish action and some uh, positive reversals. And that's good. In terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow, both are kind of different, showing different things. In terms of stochastic fast, it's showing there might be a little bit of resistance here. And on the slow, it's showing that there might be another leg up for this one. And on the, on the moving average bands, you're able to see that they're ever so expanding. <laughs> There's not much to say here. Uh, it's kind of looking a bit ugly, so we'll just leave it there. And on Fibonacci retracements, and the reason why I'm showing you this one is because high frequency traders and institutional buyers use it. Currently, the resistance is at 1190. The supports are 959, 778, 651, 523, and 366. If we were to take a look into an hourly perspective, what we're able to see here, let's do actually 30 minute perspective in the last five days, some supports and resistances that are very important to us. The current really important support is at 893. And then after that, it's 868. And then going down to the $8 mark, that's an important one. And then 749 going down to 697 and then down to 656. 
down to six dollars and then around 560 going down to 504 and then 463 down to 427 and then downwards to around 350 resistances 932 that's a very strong one appears to be and around the ten dollars so that's another strong one 1053 appears to be another strong one and above that we really have to go down to 15 minutes in the last uh, day or so to try to understand other resistances uh but i guess 1093 and then 1190 there there's a lot happened here from on this candle so it doesn't really appear to be much of a resistance in that sense but it could be above around 1190 and comes to the question to ed what do you think is going to happen here well, this is a highly shorted stock with a very small flow. It can really be explosive. I do believe this is continuously going to be an uptrend in general. As you get to see, there was a hiccup on there, uh, but this is really starting to look like a bullish flag. If you're kind of can imagine it, if not uh, here, let me try to help you. Um, it's going to look something similar to let's say somewhere similar to this here on um, that is a bullish flag in itself. A bullish flag is like as the name suggests it is a bullish indicator so currently it does show this very strong support at the 860 uh, and i do anticipate for it to still continue on show strength whether today or tomorrow it'll be very interesting when market opens generally it does kind of start dips dipping and then kind of either shoots up later on in the day or first off in the first few hours and uh, i think one or two things that might be able to get this one down one is higher short selling from institutions or actually three things one high short selling from institutions to the brokers banning this one such as they did for some hot stocks before because of high uh, movement uh, which is also a little bit speculative like i'm not speculative it's a little bit of uh, almost an unethical thing like why are you banning certain stocks and not and where they come up with quote unquote we're trying to protect you well if you're protecting me you don't sell the stock at a discount that kind of way and then the third one is panic selling and panic selling is the one you need to worry about is because some people have panicked before and they kind of looked into this one and then they kind of took their composure later on during the day after lunch and then bought back uh, the stock or just generally you got to be very careful because it might dip quickly but it looks like a really interesting battle this is, has this has a very smaller shares float uh, than AMC basically what I'm trying to say when I'm talking about shares flow is that there are less shares available than AMC for instance and it really has a high short interest which makes a perfect recipe for a short squeeze what do you think about this one make sure to mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like and have a wonderful day now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that give us picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just think we think about swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day